Michael Saylor on the Joe Rogan podcast will be the pivotal defining moment of this bull run manifesting 101. Bitcoin, crypto, all and tea. Hey. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name's Piano Matty B. That is Scaramucci. This is your morning TA. A brief glimpse into the crypto markets where the sun's shining, where the winds blow. All the humble opinion of this piano. Zamboni ball ringing the down. The FOMO index has inched down to 70. From yesterday, 71 Bitcoin dominance is 52%. 24 hour volume is 93 billion. The overall market cap 2.51. Give or take a hundred million. <laughs> well, as the purge finally ended, has the market stalemate been thwarted, or will we be stuck in this economic doldrums for longer? Yesterday, we saw price action tally up its second bottom and a bounce at 64.5 before making a heartbreakingly modest rally back up, reaching for the 200 moving average but falling short, picking out at 66.9 and has fluttered back down to at time of production, 66.2, leaving a this epic cute little bear flying and the price probability of this pattern is and sing it with me now oh you take the pull you slide it all the breakout point and then we're all at 60k -ish. and down and out our channel of eternal monotony so there's that a market point of interest today is that the 20 moving average has crossed bearish not only over the 50 moving average, but also the 200 moving average across we haven't seen happen since way back in late January. 2024, which riddled in a 10% downside before crossing back bullish. Now, where would a 10% dip from here take us? Well, that's oh snap. <laughs> 60k ish, where the dastardly but cute little bear flag takes us. So let's chalk that up to a double word bearish score at that level. Now over on the ding dong, you can see we are respecting our triangle of neutrality's resistance now acting as support. My heartbreakingly bullish outlook for today would be for price action to get back up and over the 20 moving average at 67.4. Grab that brass ring hanging on the 23.6% fib. Up at 68.4. Now, although this would seem bullish and make everybody 1% happier, <laughs> my true barometer of bullish prowess is to carve out and close a candle above this stubborn old 71.3 level. Until we do that, we will only be putting in lower highs, which leave us susceptible to continued downward action. Failing that, <laughs> there is a chance we take a quick dipsy doodle down to the 50% fib at 62.5, which is in the 50% moving average area. A level we haven't revisited since way back in the end of February when we were coasting along at 42k. And as we approach the halving, it's like a spaceship. Coming back through the Earth's atmosphere, she's bumpy and chaotic. And the panels could rip off at any second, but inevitably, it will break through 
giving way to the fresh air of a bull market's all-time high. <laughs> and would you look at that, my friends? The sun's up. It's another beautiful day here on planet Earth. A day none of us are guaranteed. Yet we're happy enough to... Happy enough? Yet we're lucky enough to have anyway. So get out there and knock them dead. And remember... We're playing the same game as our psychopathic elected leads. And that's right, it's the long game. Sauce them out and have a fantastic day. <laughs> and we'll be going live right away, so grab yourself a coffee. Join me for a quick one, and by all means... Sing it with me now. I'll run the banks of boom to spank. Bitcoin, crypto, morning tea. Hey, whoa. Cha -cha -cha -cha. Can you see it? Can you see Michael Saylor on Joe Rogan? I can. To me, I mean, I can, I can. I can see him on it. I can see him filibustering Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan not even, even being able to get a word in edgewise. <sighs> Bullish whistle. <clears throat> and that would be the pivotal defining moment of this bull market. It would just make sense. And the fact that he hasn't been on it, it's kind of bizarre to me. I don't really understand that. I don't, obviously, I don't know how the hell Joe Rogan books is... Uh, his podcasts, but you would think that he would be on his radar about now, perhaps. That'll be interesting to see. It'll be one of those, we talked about this, <laughs> so it should have come as no surprise to anyone in this boutique community. I realized in this bull market that that segment, we talked about this, so it should have come as no surprise. It comes up. You know, half, half, the, half, the, half the week, usually, to the point where I, I don't do some sometimes, just because I don't want, I don't want the, to be, become a stale uh, bit, so to speak. But in this bull market, when things generally go up, you know, we have some swings down. Terry Groh, yeah, give old, give old Joe a call here. See if you can get him in. And when, and when you're done booking Michael Saylor, book me on Joe Rogan, too. I, I got some things to tell him about Canada. Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, yeah. When, um, when, when it's basically going up, there are some small swings that come down, you know, and then everyone gets delusionally bearish. Ah, it's over. But then sometimes I like to think, oh, I don't like to think, sometimes I don't like to think. When we take a look at the monthly chart, which we will in about five minutes, going to take a look at that. It looks awfully similar to the last bull run. So we'll do a comparison. That's why I put that in the uh, the thumbnail. That and I also don't know uh, how to make, what to put in the thumbnails usually. Kyle Mack, the handsome and charismatic, the one and only, the incomparable, 1-800. Kyle Mack, 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 Mack. He says, I don't think Rogan knows much about BTC, Bitcoin. And he's not the type to look stupid on his own show. <laughs> I'm sure that's not how Kyle said it. Um, I think he does look, no, um, I'd, one of the first maybe orange-pilled podcasts I ever saw was Joe Rogan and Andreas Antonopoulos, which if you don't know, Andreas Antonopoulos is essentially the OG of crypto or crypto. He'd be like rolling. How dare you say that of Bitcoin? He uh, he's probably the biggest OG yet the smallest social media imprint. If that's if that makes sense, like he's he doesn't have a huge YouTube channel. I mean, it's gigantic compared to mine, but him being the OG of OGs, it's not as big as you'd think. Like, it should be the biggest. He's so smart. He's so smart, this guy. And anyway, he was on uh, Joe Rogan. God, 
I want to say 2016, 2017. Now, any of you with internet gumshoes in the in the chat, you can find that out. Put the date when Andreas Antonopoulos, I think he's been on it a couple times, actually. And he actually gave Joe Rogan some Bitcoin. Oh, God, it'd be interesting to see how much it was at that point. And he also did like some sort of contest where he was giving away Bitcoin. It's getting hazy. It's getting hazy. It's almost, see, when I say 2017, I feel like it's three years ago. But really, 2017 is, God, it's almost 10 years ago. Isn't that crazy how fast time goes by? The world was so different, 2017. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to have to say, I he, he does know about Bitcoin. It has been on his radar, basically, because of uh, Andreas Antonopoulos. And, of course, I used Andreas in my... Uh, tribute with the we didn't start the fire tribute song he had to be in there i was like how do i fit in antonopolis but just luckily andreas antonopolis is is one of the seven syllabalistic uh patterns in that song so it just andreas antonopolis made sense so now it looks like we're almost hitting Doug Yoder, Rogan has met, maybe I should do it the same Kyle voice. Rogan has mentioned that he has around 250K in Bitcoin. Wow, crazy. And that's, he bought it at, I'm going to say sub 10K, sub 10K. So, you know, it's not, it's, we were talking about yesterday how these massive influencers are already gazillionaires. It's like they go to the Esalon Institute, become financially independent or dependent. You might, you know, so the hand that gives is higher than the hand that receives. <clears throat> and yeah, so that's interesting. 250K, what doesn't surprise me at all. Hello, Bobby Kennedy. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in to the, the live stream today. 53 likes. That means less than half or more than half, didn't like it. I'll have to put in more effort. I have to provide more value to get those likes up. If you happen to forgot, maybe click those likes so our YouTube doesn't kill the, kill the, it'll just kill it. It just goes like this. Next, shelves it. Uh, are we about to hit 67K? Uh, Squeaky McGee, is that's that's the Kyle voice? I'd maybe stick with Ma Michael Saylor. No, this is my movie trailer voice. And how dare you, Squeaky McGee, say anything bad about this voice. This voice is a movie trailer voice, and it's one of my favorite voices. <laughs> Scotty Moore, can we get up? Can we get McConaughey to, McConaughey to pump those likes? You know, the funny thing about, at the very end, I put in an interstellar, you know, when I was talking about the rocket ship and how... Uh, <laughs> Kyle Mack, check your sources, buddy. Um, when I put in the Interstellar thing, when I first watched Interstellar, and now I say five years ago, but maybe it was 20 years ago, Christ. Who knows? Who knows how long Interstellar came out? I kind of, I looked past it. I didn't think it was that great. And I found a lot, lot of, little confusing, maybe a little long too. Uh, those, uh, you know, good old Chris Nolan, he, he really likes to bend time with his movies. But as I revisited, I just, every time I watch it, it's it's like the Matrix. It's, every time I watch it, it gets more interesting. I see more things about it. And it's uh, my brother-in-law and I, we, we both love Interstellar. And somehow, no matter how many conversations we have or what the conversation is about, we end up back at interstellar somehow it's like this intellectual tie that binds our conversations together uh so very bizarre let's take a look at these charts here <sighs> the four hour and 67k so like we said in the video 67.4 will take us to the 200 moving average which is let's face it folks so where we got to be we Oh, that's the magnet. 
We got to be over the 200 moving average. Here it is, right? It's very rare that we're under it. You know, this is only a couple of days. So who cares? A couple of days. Um, oh, that's right. MTJ, remember uh, Peter Zine famously trashing Bitcoin? It's like, yeah, there's one place uh, Bitcoin's going, and that's the zero. So it's, it's at, it was at 16K. Uh, <laughs> no, I got, I got just squeaky, gee, squeaky, me, gee. it was just an excuse for me to do the movie trailer voice. I don't need to be asked twice. Um, getting under this 200 moving average is very rare on the four hour chart, unless we're deep, deep in the bear market, which we're not. So this is traditionally and historically usually a great place to bounce off of. I, I'd be very surprised, very surprised to, to hit these lows of 60K from this majestic, dastardly, but cute little bear flag right here. It's like, this is, this bear flag is so textbook, it's almost destined to fail. Do you know what I mean? It's like when sometimes, sometimes things line up so perfectly that it just has no other route but to deny itself. I don't know how that makes sense, but... Oh, here, so Terry Crow. My research shows Antonopoulos has been on GRE four times. 2014, 2000. Oh, the heart's in the middle. I can't even read it. Why do they put that heart right there? 2014, twice, three times. Three times in 2014 and once in 2016. Yes. Also, Adam Curry, the godfather of podcast, has slowly been converting Joe Rogan to Bitcoin believer. Yes, that's right. That is right. Adam Curry. Thank you for the, the there's always a couple of uh, internet gumshoes in the in the chat helping me out here. Uh, 62K is likely, 52K is a strong maybe. Yeah, the the only reason I think, like my, my whole theory on why this is close to about as bottoming as we're going to get is... JP checking out if he's not, if he's uh, if he's been banned by the channel. Um, is that we're under the 200 moving average. And now historically, this is very rare, even on the four hour noisy little so-and-so to be underneath for so long. And, and I mean, this looks like a long time. It's a day or two, right? But see what back here, bing, we just wicked underneath. That was retail going, I'm selling. And they lost. And then we went up and then it came down and then we wicked to the 200 and retail screamed, I'm selling too. And they got out. So here we see this wick. I know it's probably pretty small, especially if you're on your phone. We wick down. That's when retail screen for the third time. I'm selling again. I'm out. And then that's that's it. So 67.2. Listen, we're all we're already at 67.4. This is what we said in the uh, movie or the movie. Yeah, the major motion picture, the video I just did on my iPhone 6s. 67.4. So on Monday, we told you that uh, we, me, me and Scaramucci's, we told you the price would, would dump. And 24 hours later, it, it was at 67.4. That's reason enough for the likes. So today we said that it would be at 67.4. We're at 67.3-ish. That's, that's, that deserves a like, I think. If, if, if anything was going to get liked, it would be the fact that you find out the price a little before it happens. Will we hit... That magical 200 moving average. We should see some resistance there. But I feel like we're having a nice little pump so far. Oh, Jesus, I just jinxed it. That's what I got to keep 67.3 on my trading view. Hasn't really populated because it's Binance. So I guess maybe I see, I see 67.325 here. So maybe it's going to come in the ticker right there. So this is the four hour chart. And again, if if you need a barometer of bearish bouncing, it's the 200 moving average. When we go underneath it, you can almost set your calendar that we're going to start bouncing back. It's very rare unless we're in deep, deep bear market territory, uh, which we're not. We're in deep, deep bull market territory so this bounce isn't that crazy 
So I've seen this has come down. So I wonder which one is this one going to go up to 325 then come down to 67.3? I don't know. Anyway, we're 100 bucks away from 67.4, which is the 200 moving average, uh, which we got to be. And you can see, actually, we called this we called this uh, price action right here. We'd probably come down to it, 67.4. There's a lot of, this is a noisy little so-and-so, isn't it? We got John Travolta there. We got uh, old Joey B there doing his... Is dancing like no one cares. Uh, so let's this this is what I want to do. And this is why I put that in the thumbnail. And again, when I make thumbnails, it's the last thing I do. And that's probably my biggest mistake. Because a lot of times people can will just click on a video because of the thumbnail, right? But I mean, it's the last thing I do. And it's usually when I'm like, I hear Duke's kind of making eggs or whatever. I'm like, ah, let's get this thumbnail down, blah, blah, tick, 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 bang. But the reason I did it is because of the monthly chart. I wanted to take a look at this little 67.4. There we are. There you go. Hit the likes for getting the price uh, four hours in advance. Here we go. The monthly chart. Let's get rid of some of this noise here. Get rid of John Travolta. Get rid of the... I will keep the, the green fire. Why not? So when we look at, oh, I'll use this arrow here again. When we look at this, this is a pretty epic pump. It's six green candles in a row. And the reason why I'm keeping this smaller is because I got to do an extension. And blah, 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 blah. So this is an epic pump of six candles in a row, right? And then essentially you could say that that bull run was finito. So let's do, uh, let's find out what that was. What was the percentage gain we saw there? Let's take it there and go to there. Let's, this first one, we won't do the second one. 626%. Interesting, right? 626% for that epic run we had in 2020. Now, if we do this epic run, which was 7% green candles in a row takes us to 191 percent now you're probably saying piano maddie b that's you say it ain't so that can't be the bull run i mean that's uh look at my voice is kind of turning into um the president's the old president's um hey buddy wow that's some some nice hair you got there Oh, you put on the thing. I'm just in the middle of one one little thing here, Duke. I've been saying I was gonna get to, but you can you can watch. Hold on. So that's 100. If we were to go 600 fractals, right? This is the the, the fractals or fractals. Oh damn it! I tell you, ah, I screwed it up. Here we go. Let's go 600. Dun dun dun. Let's just call it 600. 172k 172k if we were to follow that epic bull run of 2020 that's what it would look like now can you imagine let's can you turn that, that reverb off for a second buddy it's so loud in my ears um can you imagine what this would look like this massive pump that's what a bull run looks like not this little guy here. This is just where we were way back here in this bull run. And then we went all the way up here. This is a logarithm, so it's hard to tell. But that, that's where that's where we're going, folks. So uh, strap in. Strap in. Oh, we got a request here from uh, Dave, da David, Sony David Sony Music. Hey, dude, can you play Help by the Beatles tomorrow? Tomorrow? Sure what about today? Bobby Ty. Hey, Maddie, do you think we will have a crash before or after having? I don't think we're going to see a crash. Or like, to tell you the truth, Bobby Ty, it, are, are these really crashes, these 10%? Can you really factor in 10% as a crash or even 20%? Because, I mean, historically, the crashes that we're all, we all are, are, are familiar with, right, Duke, is, is 30%, right? 30% is the, is the crash that we normally have. I don't think we're going to have it because where did it, where did someone say someone said something very interesting. Do you think uh, Larry Fink um, is going to ever look stupid? That's a great thing. Do you think he's going to tell everyone that Bitcoin is the, is the um, 
apex predator and then look stupid no he's not going to so i i, I think these these crashes will become diminished but you know this is maybe my bullish delusion Dada, take yeah buddy yes do you remember a help can you can you hit the can you hit the reverb can you hit the reverb um do you remember help do you remember yeah. help you do oh, okay let's try help. I think you're in a, a higher key. Help. Are you in, e, was it E minor? Help. Help. I need somebody. Help. I need somebody. Help. help. I need somebody. Help. Not just anybody. Help. Help. I need someone. Help. I can't do it. <laughs> I think we're in a, a weird key. Oh, it's A minor, wasn't it? Help. I need somebody. Help. I need somebody. <laughs> That's okay, don't worry. Help, I need somebody help. Not just anybody help. It was D. It help. was D. Was it? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay, well, as a, we, uh, we'll uh, we'll DM DM David Sony Music and uh, and let let him know that we train wrecked that song for. Her. Let's do another one. Let's make up for it. Hey, what's that song that you were working on yesterday? Do you think you could pull that one off? I'll help you. See, Duke's gonna make a tutorial on how to how to actually play this song. Maybe today. Go for it. Let's try it. No. I forgot the chords. And that's all. I'm a dreamer, but my heart's of gold. I had to run away and hide, or so I wouldn't come back home. I forgot the word. Sometimes when things go right. Sometimes when things go right, doesn't mean they're always wrong. Just take this song. Just take this song. Just take this song. One more night. No, no, no. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Home, sweet home. Tonight, tonight, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Home, sweet job buddy good job nice pitch nice singing uh let's why is there a waving octopus waving off that's dave digital the goat 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 horns goat yeah that's a goat uh let's uh let's uh, do some shout outs why shall we while we're here mm -hmm. oh you're getting too big to sit on your old man's knee here uh dave digital the dave goat digital the goat crypto billy one 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 crypto billy one one Swashbuckling Scallywag. Swashbuckling Scallywag. Squeaky McGee. Squeaky McGee. Curtis Neal. Curtis Neal. Ava Angel. Ava Angel. And Cliff BTC. Cliff BTC. Scotty Mo. Scotty Mo. Randy a bite. Randy a bite. David Sony Music. David Sony Music. And Bruce Mai. Can bump it. Lucy can bump it. Max Power. Max Power. Our good friend Misko. Misko. And Terry Crow. Terry Crow. Finally, the backup kid. The backup kid. And Jimmy Cocos. All right, Duck Duck. We're playing the same game as our psychopathical acting. So hard, long way, so zoom out, long way, so zoom out, and now the fantastic. Yeah, I run the banks of bones, Bitcoin, crypto, money, yeah. Good job.
job, buddy. Nice singing. Let's sing a bit. Make sure you brush those teeth, eh? For, for, for school. We don't want to go with a, without you brushing your teeth anyway. Thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for that. Oh, there we go. Take that reverb off. Thank you for the shares for that one person. Just that one person. Sell it. Your friend, your your colleague, your family member that may be on the fence with uh, Bitcoin. So here's some prices to uh, that we said we're going to look for. 67.4. We hit there already. Then it's uh, 68.4 is our next line of resistance to uh, look out for. And then, of course, if we don't get over that dastardly 71.3, it's just... Higher lows, right? Or lower highs. Lower highs. Anyway, have a great one. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. Hope your day is fantastic. Make sure you like and subscribe.